We Happy Few uses a backdrop of World War I and II history to establish an alternate timeline set in 1960s Britain. To do that, they include a ton of references to the real world. Here's every reference in the first 20 minutes of gameplay. Let's dig in. Wait, already? Yes, the title We Happy Few is a reference to the St. Crispin's Day speech in Shakespeare's Henry V, delivered on the eve of the Battle of Agincourt. We few. We happy few. The patriotic speech was meant to rouse the troops in brotherly bonds, and it worked. The British overtook the French in this iconic battle of the Hundred Years' War. Moving on. Arthur's job is similar to Winston Smith's, the main character of 1984. As an employee of the records department at the Ministry of Truth, Smith was responsible for literally rewriting historical records to match the current, ever-changing rhetoric of the ruling party. Similarly, Arthur approves or redacts articles to help joy-addled citizens better forget the past. This ad is one of many references to Victory Gardens, an idea pioneered by George Washington Carver during World War I. Households were encouraged to plant vegetable gardens to reduce pressure on limited wartime rations and to boost morale by providing a productive wartime activity for civilians. Given how many citizens and we happy few are starving, these gardens might be a thing of the past. This article mentions the winning garden features the Union Jack and the German Imperial flag in harmony, suggesting an alternate history in which England and Germany are in some way connected. The black, white, red colors refer to the flag flown by the German Empire from 1866 to 1918, so whatever events split the We Happy Few timeline from our own likely happened during World War I. The near black flower seeds were a gift from Colonel von Stauffenberg. A member of the German resistance, Klaus von Stauffenberg was best known for helping to lead Operation Valkyrie, a failed attempt to assassinate Adolf Hitler. His role in the game, however, remains to be seen. Look closely and you'll notice that the third place prize for the competition goes to a garden named And Did Those Feet in Ancient Times. This also happens to be the name of a William Blake poem, in which Jesus and Joseph travel to the land now known as England. George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, was said to have been executed for treason by being drowned in a barrel of Malmsey, a sweet Madeira wine. Hopefully this soda is less cadaverous. Minister Joseph Lister likely refers to the British surgeon, an early advocate for sterilizing surgical tools. Looks like he's been promoted to Minister of Health in We Happy Few's timeline. Congrats, Joseph! War bonds predate the 20th century, but were marketed extensively to the public during the World Wars to raise money to wage battles. The reference to communism suggests this England is in some alternate version of the Cold War. The main character shares a name with Captain Arthur Hastings, a recurring figure in Agatha Christie's novels, specifically Hercule Poirot's BFF. Christie's Arthur was gentle and scrupulous, but not too bright, which might be true for this character too, depending on how you play him. Piers Soap is a real brand, one of the first mass-produced glycerin soaps. Imagine living in a time when inventing soap could make you rich. Cheshire's Curiosity Pop is likely a reference to the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland, and that old idiom about what happens to curious cats. So are like all the soft drinks in We Happy Few this sinister? Arthur has excellent taste in literature, featuring a number of Jane Austen books. Clive Burtwistle, Arthur's next door office mate, also has an excellent selection of light reading. Shout out to British horror masterpiece, The Wicker Man. Mitya Nikish was a pianist and jazz band leader in the Weimar Republic. This picture? is not him. Pneumatic tubes were developed in the mid-1800s, but their presence here is likely a reference to Brazil, a British dystopian sci-fi flick, itself also heavily based on 1984. 
Prudence's former office features J.M. Barry's Peter Pan and two books by Jack Worthing, also known as Uncle Jack, the game's friendly media figurehead. The secret history outlined here accurately portrays the Bolsheviks' rise to power in Russia, but the group, led by Lenin, was adamantly communist. The fact that they're portrayed as anti-communist in this article points to another change in the We Happy Few history. Both of these ads are for real companies. Suter Hartman and Rotgen's composition company sold paint, and Haig Whiskey has been distilling since the 1720s. The Battle of Flowers is a tradition on the island of Jersey, commemorating the coronation of King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra. The Worthings mentioned in the article are Uncle Jack and his daughter. Dandelion and burdock is a drink that dates back to the Middle Ages. Originally lightly fermented like a mead, it's now available as a soft drink, and unlike the other sodas advertised, has no connection whatsoever with death. These fashion-forward figures sport references to two pieces of British culture. The black suit with white piping is inspired by The Prisoner, a dystopian spy show from the 1960s. The sinister man's mask bears a striking resemblance to Guy Fawkes, a member of the failed gunpowder plot meant to overthrow the British government. These days, the iconic design is perhaps more recognizable from V for Vendetta. This figure seems to be enforcing the government-mandated joy prescription, not a particularly revolutionary act. Uncle Jack's episode on vitamin C mentions Captain Cook, a British explorer who experimented with measures against scurvy, like eating fresh fruit. A thing, sadly, in little supply in the world of We Happy Few. Speaking of Uncle Jack, he shares a name with Jack Worthing, a character in Oscar Wilde's satire The Importance of Being Earnest. The play recommends approaching serious matters trivially, and the trivial matters seriously. Appropriately, Uncle Jack speaks lightheartedly about a good number of serious topics, like starvation and mass chemical sedation. Tune in again next time, and we'll talk about malaria. It's not nearly as bad as it sounds. The motto, In Posterum Cum Guadio, roughly translates to, Onward with Joy, a grim pun indeed given the portrayal of Joy's psychoactive effects in the very next scene. As you can see, this game is chock full of references. We counted 27 in the first 20 minutes alone. And they don't stop there. The residents of Wellington Wells are a well-read lot, and you can find nods to Nietzsche, Mark Twain, Omar Khayyam, and more. But given the alternate timeline of We Happy Few, even the most obvious reference might not be what it seems. So keep your eyes and ears peeled, wastrels. While you're here, check out our in-depth video about the connections between We Happy Few and the brilliantly surreal spy show The Prisoner. And uh, hey, subscribe to Polygon for more videos like these.